wishbones on ponies and warm felted kittens, rainbows and Moses on ribbons with <laughs> When the bee sings, when I'm feeling Oh, wow. I know. <coughs> hey, Robin, is that you? Yep, that's me. Hey, another Zoom meeting. What do you know? What? You <laughs> another have the Zoom cutest. Meeting. Unmute, Robin, unmute. Am I muted? Uh, Am I muted? Yeah. Is that, is that Chris there, too? Hi, everybody. Hey. Good uh, morning. Lovely to see everybody. Yeah. Hey, Debbie, yeah. good job so, with the solo in Not in Our Town last week. That was oh, really hey, nice. Oh, hey, thanks so Thank much. You. I didn't feel my voice was cooperating, but Sounded thank you. Sounded good Chris. on tape. It was fun to do. It was fun to do. And Robin, so, I'm sorry I stole your lights. I hope that's okay. Hey, it's festive <laughs> time. It's a time for sharing I figured. and caring. Well, I don't have I'm lights, but it. I have trees. The trees are do adorable. Do you like my trees? I do like the yeah, trees. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So what are we doing here today anyway? What's, what's Reverend this Matthew all about? was supposed to be here. I don't know where he is yet. He's yeah, where is he? Come about on. That. I don't know where he is. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Should I text him? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll give him, I'll send him a text. Merry Christmas. I, uh, oh, oh, there we right. go. Sorry. Sorry, I'm late. There he is. Okay. I, I yeah. got caught by Christmas music and I uh. couldn't stop singing. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Mariah Carey, little Mariah Carey. Yeah. I no, I don't. I don't do more George Michael. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That makes a yeah. little but more Merry sense. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Merry oh, wait a minute. That's not the right tune, is it? That's wrong. Not that quite. Yeah, that's not But George it reminds Michael. me Merry Christmas, Robin. Merry Christmas, Robin. Merry Christmas, Debbie. 
Merry Christmas, Reverend Matthew. And Merry Christmas, Chris. Merry Christmas, Matthew, and everybody. A wonderful, wonderful Merry Christmas. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. oh, man. <laughs> and a bottle of... No, that's not right. Um, oh, definitely a bottle of... There's a yeah. bottle of something involved, <laughs> or I'm sure. Or two bottles of... It's a little early yet, but yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah, well, thanks... Thanks for thanks for your time again. Sorry I was late. Um, what we're doing today is we're laying out our plans for our Christmas Day service, um, and so I really do appreciate your time uh, joining us for that uh, and and zooming in for that because uh, I know that it's a really busy time. Yeah, yeah. That oh, that's is. Christmas is a Sunday. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. So we got we need the service because it's a Sunday, right? And it's a yep. Christmas Sunday service yes and we're all going to be there christmas eve the saturday and then turn around and do it again on sunday uh, oh my and, gosh yeah exhausting <laughs> well, um hopefully not uh yeah. and, and maybe some plans we make today will make sure that it isn't um okay so uh okay. the theme of the service is favorite things uh and that finishes out our month-long theme da, da, um, da, da. yep yeah, you know the tune. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sound of music is one of my favorites. And we'll uh, we're just gonna walk through uh, the order of service and the elements and the scripts that we already have. Um, starting with our welcomes, uh, big Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, Merry which Christmas. let's yeah, let's practice that. Let's on three. Okay, we'll see. Wait, we'll are just, we are we saying it on three or is it one two three go? Yeah. So or do one, we take three two, counts? Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry, it, Merry Christmas. That's it. Okay. Oh. One, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas. 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 Well, here's what I suggest for You're a You're doing the chalice party. lighting? You're doing it? Well, I'm just suggesting a reading for it right now. Oh, okay. We'll decide who does it later. Well, listen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. From the Reverend Board, uh, Gordon B. McKeeman. Christmas is not so much a matter of explanation and interpretation as it is a mood and a feeling. It is a time in the cycle of the year set apart by hope and fellowship and generosity. Christmas is the season of the heart. Um, that's okay. Uh, what about something just a little bit more spirited though? Bring the candles, light the tree. There's something Christmas does to me. It weaves a charm. It casts a spell. It sheds a warmth that I know so well. Well, thank God, or whatever else may be, for what Christmas does to me. There we go. Hey, you guys, you know what would be really nice? You know, we, we, we know all these traditional Christmas carols, but there are others out there, too. And I'm thinking of one that we recorded with the Euphorics, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago during the pandemic. Um, kind of has a little bit of a Western theme to it. It's called oh. Corn, Water, and Wood. Anybody know about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the file. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah, I don't know it. Yeah, I it's really a nice Christmas song. You you might have heard it before. Yeah, I think we recorded it last year and you guys did a wonderful job of it. Here, I have it right oh, here. Oh, thanks. I was in the Arroyo gathering strays. You know, cowboys and cattle don't get holidays. I would have been finished Except for one little guy who kept leading me farther astray. He went up on the mesa, across the ravine, past the Indian ruins and the muddy red stream. So I stopped for a spell, because I was bone tired. I guess I started to dream. He saw three painted horses, three dark skinned men, a mask made of clay, voices like wind. Singing, we seek the soul of all that is good. Come bearing corn 
thanks for the corn, water, and wood. I was color coordinated with the video and I didn't even know. <laughs> oh, Bob. <laughs> you know, I, I just love the image there of the three Pueblo children tending their sheep, you know, and it's so non traditional Christian vision of what we have of the three kings. And, you know, it's, it's just really, it's a nice Western Christmas carol. Well, and it fits in so well. We've been talking about what do we have here in Arizona that we don't have anywhere else. And mm -hmm. all the New England imagery that we always get in religion. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have something that's Southwestern that really, it, really, really fits in the desert here. It is. It's a great song. Actually, well, sorry, Matthew. Oh, just there's, I, I found that the parallels between the three kings um, and the more practical gifts of corn water, corn, water and wood, and wood. Mm -hmm. over yeah. frankincense myrrh and gold yeah um, <laughs> yeah a lot more useful in the desert yeah absolutely <laughs> well actually speaking of children i think we have another we have another clip here the uh religious exploration oh. sunday morning leaders and children oh. wanted to sing and uh we could put this right here this would work really well right here uh they mm -hmm. recorded jingle bells for us hold on i think i have it right here too okay well, that'd be a little bit more upbeat. Yeah, good. Absolutely. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, dashing all the way. Ha, 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 ha. Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Dashing through the snow on a one-horse open sleigh. Over the hills we go, laughing all the way. Ha ha ha! Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. Oh, fun it is to ride and sing the sleighing song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Quack, 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 
of service are a reading, um, and Aaron, uh, our congregational administrator, is uh, recording that for us, followed by a Christmas meditation that I'll lead. This is by Reverend Richard S. Gilbert. Faith, hope, Love, these three I offer you this season. Faith that living affirms, hope that caring illumines, love that matters more than anything. Faith, hope, love, these three, not as gifts I offer them, for they are not mine to give. They are yours and mine to share, humbly with one another, fumbling with, hold their promise in our hands. Faintly, we speak the trembling words, faith, hope, love. These three I offer you this season. For the meditation, I'll begin by inviting people to breathe in and out a little more slowly to settle their bodies. Into place. And to feel the past and the present and the future. And that flow of time. Breathe in one last time and feel community. that expanse of community that surrounds us. Our favorite things I'll probably reflect on. The wonderful things that our sight and sound and our smell, taste, even the textures that we touch. Now, these are all reminders that in times when our bodies and our hearts and our spirits are low, when the dog bites and the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, that recalling our favorite things, bringing that memory back and feeling that within our bodies is a way for us to remind ourselves of faith, and hope and love. These things are within us and among us and remembering our favorite things. Then we don't feel so bad, but it's more than just that momentary remembering, it's about embodying. Embodying the faith and the hope and the love. In the story, Sound of Music, the song, My Favorite Things, comes during a thunderstorm. And of course, it's a metaphor for the coming storm of war and fascism and oppression. And by remembering favorite things, by embodying them, by bringing them together, by in bringing that faith and that hope and that love alive, that group begins to become a family and they begin that possibility of weathering the storm 
which of course the story tells us that they do. It's no different for us. So I'll probably say that and then invite people to breathe again, breathing in and feeling that breadth of community that surrounds us, breathing in and out, feeling the flow of time, breathing in and out, and then resting our bodies in faith and hope and love. Now, this next part, I don't really know about. Um, Robin, you and Julie are putting together a song? Yes. <laughs> I... Yes. You looked a little surprised, Robin. <laughs> Is that the title of the song that we're doing? Oh, who are well, these? I don't know. Did yeah, I get it that's, right? that's the title of the song, the Alfred Burt Carol, Oh, Who Are These That Throng the Way. I literally did not know the title. And I was like, I don't know that I know that song. Well, it's also called All on a Christmas Morning sometimes. But oh, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the great Alfred Burt Carols. Can somebody look that up? I mean, Chris, can you, is there a YouTube video we could quickly watch of that? Uh, yeah, hold on. I'm sure there is just one quick second. And Robin, while he's looking that up, what I I don't know the song yet. I mean, what can you tell me about it? Uh, very little, except it's a very simple, pretty harmony that Julie and I have went run through once, and we will nail it by the time we record it. <laughs> Super. It was yeah. It was a few weeks ago um, after choir that um, Chris and Julie and I kind of just like ran through it. And I, it's, our voices sound, in my opinion, I think they sound really nice together. They work really um, well together, yeah. yeah and it's just a simple little harmony. It's pretty. So. Great. As you can, as you can tell, I, I was unaware of what it was called. <laughs> so it's a darn good thing it's a simple melody. <laughs> the blank look on your face. I know, it's like we are. <laughs> All right, we are.
Isn't that a beautiful Carol? I love that. Very That's one pretty. of one yeah. of the set from Alfred Burt. There's only fifteen of them, I think. I like it better than scripture. <laughs> I really like that it talks about um, the gifts that it brings of love and joy and thankfulness again, instead of, you know, frankincense and myrrh and gold. It's well, well, what is the season really about? You know, to me, that that really speaks loudly. And it's Christmas morning. Mm hmm. I felt invited. That's why I like it better than scripture. Scripture is like, hey, this happened, mm -hmm. you know? This was like, hey, you no, know, it wasn't, it wasn't the hand gesture, I guess, but it was, <laughs> it felt like an invitation to Bethlehem and to mm -hmm. this birth. Hmm. I feel like that fits into the rich tradition yeah. of pageants and things that invites people to imagine themselves what would it be if you were a shepherd if you were a townsfolk and you heard about this thing happening you know across town at that stable that you walk past all the time and in that sense it's kind of like corn water and wood too you're in yeah the invitation into the into the scene it's a first person experience rather than a third person experience well, and that's when we say what our favorite things are. I mean, the song is my favorite things. Um, the holidays are really personal that way. I, I think you're right, Debbie. It's, and maybe that's why it felt more like an invitation. These are real things. These are real experiences that I can have. Um, and then I can share my own experience of favorite things on Christmas day. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, Debbie, me, you, Chris. Chris, Debbie, me, you. Oh, you. Okay, got it. Got it. Although, if we get confused and we argue over it, it's going in. <laughs> Let's just spend half an hour of the service fighting about which it, one of us goes first, you or me. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely really going in. Does that sound okay? Does that sound yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Do you want me to actually, do you want me to tell that story or am I, am yeah. I playing? What am I doing? No, I, I would love you. If you feel comfortable, I would love you to sure. start us off telling that sure. story. Um, please. Well, I mean, talking about individual family traditions and individual things, I mean, something happened when I was a child that I hadn't realized was a practical thing. We started a family tradition where every Christmas Eve we would go to Bruno's classic Italian American restaurant, you know, with the check tablecloths and the Chianti bottles on the table with the candle drippings down them and really, really good, uh, spaghetti and meatballs. And it's all still there surprisingly on Philadelphia street in Indiana, Pennsylvania. But it wasn't until I was much older. Apparently that tradition started about the time I was six. My parents had been doing some remodeling in the house and they converted what had been garage space into a new kitchen, dining room, living room space. And for the very first time, remember it's 1972, they were super excited to have all the modern conveniences. And mm -hmm. the installer wasn't available until the afternoon of Christmas Eve. And so Dad bundled us all up in the family station wagon. Like I said, I was six. My little brother was two. My older brothers were were there too. And they were 12 and 10 that year. And so we all went to Bruno's for dinner. And then we went to the Christmas Eve service at the Methodist church. And then we came home after a long drive around the neighborhood. Well, of course, pre-cell phone times, dad had no idea what was going on. We arrived home to a brand new dishwasher. Woo uh, well, it was 1972. And honestly, that was exciting. Now I was yeah. six, so I had no idea what was going on. But then every subsequent year, it got to be, so are we going to Bruno's again this year? Are we going to Bruno's this year? And for every year after, and even down to now, I, I, usually pack up a couple of my friends and drag them to either Mama Louise's or Caruso's, which is the closest to uh, the Italian American that I was used to then. And we have big plate of spaghetti and meatballs on Christmas Eve. 
Yeah. Your dad's slick. That's I'm <laughs> impressed. Yeah. Very slick. He could be very, yeah. very slick. Yeah. And every year a dishwasher appears somewhere <laughs> in America. Yeah, I, I wish. Mine is getting starting yeah. to creak. Mine is almost that old now and it needs needs to be replaced. But oh well. You know, I, I feel very fortunate to have such wonderful memories of the holidays growing up. Um, I'm one of five children. And so mm. there was always a lot happening around the holidays. And um I remember my three older siblings, there's quite an age difference and they would all come home from if they were working or if they're in college and there'd just be a lot of energy and a lot of um, a lot of goings on in the house. But of course, there are also some disagreements that happened uh, every once in a while. But uh, I remember one Christmas in particular, um, and I think I was 12 or 13. And I desperately wanted skis for Christmas. My friends had skis and I wanted to be able to join them. And, you know, we weren't in really in that economic status, the country club set. It was with five kids, um, but that's what I wanted. And as Christmas approached, I was really concerned because there was nothing under the tree for me. There was not one single package that had my name on it. And so I began to wonder what was going on. And I was moping around on Christmas Eve morning. And my dad said, you know, let's go for a drive. And that was one of my favorite things to do. My father loved exploring the back roads of the small towns where we lived. And I loved spending time with him. And I very seldom got the chance to spend time with alone with him. So off we went on a drive, and in the course of the drive, my father talked about, you know, the true meaning of Christmas and how it wasn't material things, but it was being together, and wasn't it wonderful that our family was together again, and the cousins would be coming, and the grandparents, and, you know, by the end of it, he just had this way of, of, of thinking about it that made me reconsider my kind of materialistic approach to the holiday. And um, in, at the end of the drive, we pulled back into the driveway at the house and he said to me, now, have you ever really been disappointed at Christmas? And I just kind of left that there. And then guess what? Christmas morning, guess what was beside the Christmas tree? Skis <laughs> and poles and boots. <laughs> and off I went skiing with my friends and that actually meant spending more time with my father but that's a story for another time yeah <laughs> wow you know when you you say have you ever been disappointed at christmas um i've i've been on the flip side of that i've been on the father side um mm -hmm. A number of years ago, right around Christmas, because it was absolutely necessary, um, our son Elliot um, had to have uh, surgery. Um, it was for a bone infection. Um, bizarre thing, never really, yeah, narrowed down where it came from. Um, but it was important, um, obviously, and uh, occurred on December 23rd. Um, he had an overnight stay because at that point, I think he was probably about eight years old. And um, so I tried to get at that point, I was serving the, the church in Riverside, California. And um, I tried to get all my work, everything ready so that I could be present to uh, our family and then stay overnight with him on the 23rd. Um, come the 24th, uh, the plan was I would uh, tap out with Stephanie and she would come and um, take him home and I would go to the church and get things ready throughout the day. Um, and about halfway through the day heard that when they went to put in a pick line, uh, that line that goes directly to your heart so that heart. you can get antibiotics, um, mm -hmm. that to give him that they gave him some, um, some drugs to calm him that uh, when they didn't work, they gave him, they gave him more. <laughs> and the effect was for him to begin to hallucinate. Ooh. And it was terrifying as a parent, um, worrying, um, and they needed to keep him overnight on the 24th. Um, 
And uh, so I went back to the hospital, um, spent enough time with him um, that as much as I could, and then again, tapped out with Stephanie, went to the church, uh, didn't have time to shower or shave. Um, I, probably a little bit like uh, George from It's a Wonderful Life in the end of the scene, wide-eyed, a little terrorized. Um, congregation appreciated my being there, but really didn't want me uh, to do <laughs> Christmas Eve with them. They wanted me back at the hospital, um, yeah. which is where I ended up. Yeah. Um, oh, great. And so we pushed Christmas days out. Um, and what was really amazing, and I guess for me has stayed with me ever since, is it wasn't disappointing. Um, Christmas came that year on a different day. And um, that's something that we've carried as a family ever since, that it's really not the day. Um, it's the spending time with the people that we love. Yeah. Yeah, being with the people has always been what mattered the most to me about Christmas. Yeah, yeah. You know, we even when we were kids, um, my brother, my eldest brother, uh, had a few troubling issues with some of the friends that he would hang out with, and he ended up going away to boarding school. Um, and I, I remember being devastated that he wasn't going to be home for Christmas. And lo and behold, he snuck down the stairs Christmas morning. You know, so it's. It was always something wow. that made it so that we were all together on Christmas and we had these very specific traditions. Um, oh, yeah. They're, they're very simple, but they were, you, you could not break the Christmas rules. Oh, um, <laughs> of course, us kids were like, it's Christmas, it's five o'clock in the morning, let's do this. And our parents would be like, no, no, Christmas does not begin until father has had his coffee. <laughs> you know? So like, it would always start with my dad, like slowly making his way downstairs. And at a point, I think it became more like he was messing with us to really delay how long it took. Um, so he would have his coffee. Once he got his coffee and got into his chair, that's when children were to come downstairs and eat their <laughs> breakfast. And if you, if you did not eat your breakfast, you could not have your stocking. So, and the stocking always had fun stuff in it. So we'd scramble to eat our food and we'd run into the living room and we would just all of us dump our stockings out all over the floor. And we would mm. start the great like candy exchange of like, I don't want this and you don't want that. And listen, I'll take your orange, but you gotta give me five of your Reese's. So like, you know, the stock exchange of candy would occur. Um, and then once breakfast, coffee and stockings were all under play, my mother would come in and she would put on her Santa hat and would proceed to pass out presents to us one by one. And everybody had to sit one and wait their one. turn and like watch yeah. everybody open. And yeah. we're like, okay, it's a book. Stuart's getting another book. Yeah. Give me my <laughs> presents, you know. Um, so it's, it was always, you know, it was a fun day and it was just us together. And one by one, as family members started to pass, Christmas became a little bit harder. And we, we really tried, especially my brother in San Francisco, my mother in Arizona, then I was in Chicago. Uh, we always went out of our way to, to find a way to be to Christmas together, even if it wasn't exactly on Christmas, like with Reverend Matthew, like sometimes we would do it after and it was still our Christmas. Um, but the, I think I was 28 or 29 and we, for whatever reason, couldn't work it out. And I was gonna spend my very first Christmas without anybody in my family. Oh, and no. I was devastated. Oh, yeah, I, was, I know, I was like, no, I want my stocking. Um, and I was really Lots of drama it. involved. So much drama, always the drama. Um, I was really sad. And then about a week before Christmas, I decided that I was going to do something different instead of being devastated. And um, my roommate at the time had a boyfriend who was kind of staying with us and I invited my best friend to stay over. Um, and I secretly had been working on a fake fireplace made out of construction paper. <laughs> and I had hung a garland over this like bookcase thing that we had and secretly like hid little hooks in there that you couldn't see if you didn't know what you were looking for. And when everybody went to sleep on Christmas Eve, I snuck out of bed like a little elf and I, I put up this like fake fireplace and hung stockings for each of us. And so like I've created this like now fake fireplace with the stockings over the mantle. I snuck extra presents under the tree from Santa, which is also something that we used to do. And um, have Christmas morning as everyone's waking up. 
I <laughs> forced them to first let me make my coffee uh -huh. and uh, they had to eat a little bit of breakfast and we all made breakfast together and they were like, what are you doing? Why are you so weird? And then we came into the living area for the big reveal and they saw the fireplace and we're like, <laughs> what? And all the stockings, I was like, welcome to About Self Family Christmas. And so I made them open yeah. their, dumped their stockings out and we were like, you know, trading and stuff. And I was sitting there judgmentally sipping my coffee in my big robe. And um, then I, I made Sarah wear the Santa hat and instructed her to hand them all out one by one to each of us. One by one. And, right? Yeah. Of course, everyone had yeah. to wait. Um, and it was it was really fun. It was really silly. And I, I cooked dinner that night, all the traditional stuff that we made. We had a ham, mashed potatoes, the green bean casserole, like did the whole nine yards. And um, I remember at the end of the night, we were all kind of just sitting there around the fake fireplace. And they, we had kind of one by one discussed how Christmas was different for all of us this year and how special us kind of like making this new Christmas together alone was really cool, so. The, as the as the third of four brothers, Christmas rules must be followed. 
<laughs> yeah, I totally, totally, totally resonate to that. Oh, yeah. The same kinds of cookies every year, which I still make. Yeah. Okay, the same <laughs> menu for dinner. Okay, the same time, the, the ritual of opening the presents, yeah. But but, but it, it has stayed with me, and it's and it is. These memories <laughs> are among my favorite things. We make the kids watch uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And they think, <laughs> they think it's the best thing, but that's like two hours more sleep. Mm-hmm. Our closing, um, so what's happened is we've shared the stories, went right into this uh, last piece of music um, and then done that Mentimeter kind of response. These are the, the favorite things of people in the congregation. Um, and the last part then of the closing um, is just us discussing how this might sum up. How, how have, you know, how is the service, how does that capture uh, favorite things? Um, very brief as a closing usually is. Um, and then I would say, uh, oh, and we've got to decide on the release you know, of the flame. Something I really love about this favorite thing service is hearing how much we all kind of fundamentally have some of the exact same favorite things. Maybe packaged in a little bit of a different way, but a lot of us really share the same things, the same memories. I am always so surprised every time we start talking about anything like this, even with anybody and across congregations and across people, we have so much more in common than we have differences. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, that reminds me of that reading that we didn't use, for, we're not going to use for the chalice lighting um, by Gordon. Reverend Gordon McKeeman, that one mm -hmm. Christmas is not so much a matter of explanation and interpretation uh, as it is a mood and a feeling. <laughs> oh, come on. But it, it's the cycle of the year set apart by hope and fellowship. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you know, in all of this, what we really haven't talked about is what our favorite things are about MVUU. I mean, I think it's important that we reflect on that at this time. I mean, one of my very thing, favorite things in the world is MVUU. Mm. But um, let's see, favorite thing from MVUU. Hmm. Well, maybe this Christmas, may you give and receive the gift of open-hearted engagement. Anybody heard those words before? I see where you're going with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This Christmas, may you give and receive the courageous gift of love. And hmm. this Christmas, may you know inspiring transformation in your life and throughout the world. I, it's going to be a great service. Thank you all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what am I going to do for postlude? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I recorded a thing last year I think would work really, really well. Hold on one second. I think I have it here. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, that does not work well as solo piano. Ask me how I know. <laughs>
there's still there's still that sense of childhood innocence. I mean, just this year, I hadn't planned on being home for Halloween, but I found myself home on Halloween, and my neighborhood's a fairly busy one for trick or treaters. And I'd forgotten I'd not bought any Halloween candy, and I looked in my cupboard and went, "Oh, what am I going to do?" And I found, "Aha!" The candy canes I bought on clearance last year are right here. So I got the candy canes out. I put them in a nice bowl and I went out and gave the kids who came up trick or treating candy canes. And this one little girl came up to me and said, trick or treat, trick or treat. And I said, I'm so sorry. This is the wrong holiday, but I do have candy for you. And she looked at my bowl of candy canes and she looked up at me. And she just went, oh, Santa. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, and I just went, don't tell anyone. Amazing. Let's see if she comes back from prison with a list. Yeah. yeah. 